Well, welcome back, folks. Today we're going to install new swing arm bushings in the swing arm for the little Suzuki TS-50. These are the original two that I removed from uh, the swing arm back some months ago now. Typically, uh, given the condition of these bushings in the swing arm, I would not have replaced the bushings. They're in reasonably good condition and I think they would have been just fine. The reason I did have to remove them is I was going to, I powder coated the swing arm and there's high extreme heat involved in powder coating, of course, and very likely would have destroyed that uh, rubber, there's a rubber insert in there between the inner sleeve, the inner bushing, and this outer sleeve, which actually contacts the swing arm. And that, that would have been destroyed in the heat used for powder coating, so I was forced to remove these. If this was uh, to be have been wet coated or spray painted, uh, I could have avoided this step, but unavoidable given the circumstances. Uh, not terribly expensive, these bushings. I, I don't recall anymore exactly, but I think they're around eight or 10 US dollars each, something like that. Could be mistaken, but that's, that's what I seem to recall without looking it up. Before we go ahead and install these bushings, uh, and we'll talk about that in a little more detail, the technique I'm going to use in a minute, let's, um, let's first talk about cleaning of the uh, space right here where the bushings will be pressed into place. And of course, that'll go something like that. Unfortunately, the powder coater powder coated the inside of the space here where the bushings have to be inserted. And that, that happens seems like all the time. And even though I had asked the powder coater not to do that, I think the problem is that the person you talk to when you drop off your parts and explain your project is not the same person who actually does the powder coating. And I don't think the messages get gets relayed to the right person. So it's happened to me before we're going to have to remove that powder coating on the inside because this is a tight, actually it's almost an interference fit and this powder coating is just simply going to get in the way. Let's talk about the techniques uh, available to remove that powder coating. You can't use heat certainly and burn it out because you destroy the powder coating on the outside of the frame. So we have to come up with an alternative and that involves typically some kind of a, an abrasive a sanding or a grinding type operation. Again, there's many ways one could go about this. You could use a Dremel with, uh, this happens to be a sanding pad here, right here. And this is a sanding wheel. You could use those and you know go through that uh, tube and clean that uh, powder coating out. Uh, this also is designed for a Dremel, use on a Dremel, a rotary tool. And you can cut sections of this um, abrasive cloth. This happens to be, I think, 240 grit. And there's a slot cut in this brass sleeve or brass rod. You need a longer piece, of course, for for um, this technique. If you're gonna, if I was going to use this, but you cut strips of this and you put it in a Dremel. And again, as it spins, you know, it's and again, it's an abrasive and it uh, really just uh, abrades the powder coat out. The technique, and there's, there's other ways you could approach this. The way I'm going to do it is with a brake hone. That's what these are, cylinder hones. There, I actually have a couple of them, as you can see. This is a three shoe hone. These are inexpensive. And this is a two shoe hone. I just replaced the shoes on the two shoe hone. Uh, here are the ones I just took off. I don't know if you can see those or not, but they're pretty well worn. In fact, this one's missing pieces of the shoe itself, the abrasive. And uh, they usually come as a little kit with extra shoes. So, so I just replaced these, these two shoes. You could use a three shoe hone. This hone is also damaging. See some of the shoes missing here. Uh, and it's cracked, so I'm not going to use that one. I don't have three shoes, so I only have the two. These use the same hone. So I'm going to use a brake hone, uh, cylinder hone, and we'll run that through that, those tubes for the 
um, bushings to fit into. Now you don't want to get crazy with this. The objective is not to remove metal. The objective is to remove only the powder coating. So you have to pay attention to what you're doing. I am not going to be using any uh, lubricant such as an oil, WD-40, cutting fluid. I'm going to leave it dry and uh, just a braid using this hone in a drill. You can see this is flexible, by the way. These are available in any, any auto supply store. Again, they're not terribly expensive. You can adjust the tension on the shoes. That is how much tension the shoes place on the item being honed. That'd be this tension right here. By adjusting this uh, knurled nut up and down, which puts pressure on the spring, which pushes against these arms. I don't usually fiddle around all that much. I don't find I really have to, um, but the option is there if you wanted to adjust it. So that's the tool of choice today to go ahead and clean those tubes out on the swing arm before we can get, get on to installing As the As you bushing. can see, we're over at the bench vise. I have the swing arm mounted vertically in the vise. I've gone out of my way to wrap the swing arm with tape. It's mostly just masking tape or blue mask, uh, painter's tape. And the reason I did that, uh, the whole thing is wrapped. You can't see it in the shot, of course, but um, as I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to position it, and I didn't want to bang it around and take a chance of damaging the uh, fresh powder coat, so I maybe went a little overboard, but I want to make sure I protected it as best I could. Ultimately, I settled on this vertical position so I can get at the end of the swing arm right here with my tools. I experiment a little bit on the opposite side first. The, the opposite side is already done, and what I found is this... Uh, brake hone uh, isn't near aggressive enough, at least initially, to uh, remove that powder coat, which is very tough. Powder coat, of course, that's why it's used. It's very durable. About all this initially did was polish the powder coat, which, of course, is not what I wanted to do. So ultimately, I went to an 80 grit, yes, that's 80 grit uh, paper right there, and I mounted it in this little tool that we talked about once before. You can see right there. And I actually I tried a couple of different things, some of the Dremel tools, the uh, a finer paper. I think I started at 240. And that worked, but it wasn't near aggressive enough. I would have been here all day. So what I ultimately decided to do, or I did, is I used this 80 grit. Then I went to a... 240 grit, 220 or 240, and then I finished with the, the shoe just to polish it. Again, the intention here is to avoid removing the metal. What you just want to do is remove the powder. So we'll go ahead and I'll uh, demonstrate the technique. I'm not going to show the whole thing because this will probably take 10 minutes or so, but I'll give you a flavor of what I'm doing and we'll uh, pick this up on the other side. swing arm cleaned up of the powder coating, see right there, I want to talk a little bit about the technique I'm going to use to install the swing arm bushings. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. I'm going to use a 20 ton hydraulic shot press. Now I realize not everyone has a shot press. Uh, you can use uh, all thread with washers and nuts, which I actually demonstrated that technique a couple of years ago when I restored the Yamaha YL1. And if you're interested in that video, check up here in the upper uh, corner, right corner, and you'll see a link to that video. For this process, or for this bike, I'm going to use the press. 
in order to uh, facilitate that, I did a little prep work first. And what I did is I took the original bushings, that's what these are here, of course these are the new ones, and I wanted to determine the best way to press against the bushing using the press to reinstall the new bushing. So what I did, I took one of the originals and I examined it and what I realized or noticed is, I don't know if you can see it right there, but the inner bushing, the inner part of this bushing, that steel insert right there, protrudes approximately one millimeter or 40 thousandths beyond the face of the bushing itself on both sides. I measured it uh, multiple times around both bushings originals with a caliper, uh, a depth uh, gauge part of the caliper and determined the average is around one millimeter. So what I did is I took one of the bushings on one side and I just milled it off flat. I don't know if you can see that there. This has been flattened, this surface right here. I actually did that on both sides for that matter, but I flattened it because that is going to be the surface I'm going to press against, and I'll explain that in more detail here in just a second. I'm going to, I'm going to put the ram of the press against that surface right there and push. Obviously that'll be vertical. On the opposite side, I countersunk that inner bushing one millimeter or forty thousandths of an inch so that when I put these together like this it, it's actually keyed and it locks together. And my real objective was to be able to press on both the outer surface here and this inner bushing that protrudes at the same time. What I wanted to avoid doing is pushing on only this surface, that's the inner part of the bushing only, because it's only secured with this uh, rubber compound. And I really want to press on both surfaces at the same time. So by milling this out uh, one millimeter, 40 thousandths of an inch, I essentially achieve that so that I have an equal distribution of the load against this inner surface and this outer surface at the same time. And at the same time it becomes a bit keyed because of the indentation here or the recessed nature of this piece of the bushing. So it'll be mounted vertically like that and I'll push against this surface here and then this would actually be the new bushing that would be positioned something like that in the press and then this and then we'll just press of course and insert the new bushing into the section of the swing arm. I will lubricate uh, this up just a little bit. I won't overdo it, but I will put a little light oil on the bushing and on the inner surface here just to make it easier to press it together on the press. I did, by the way, take a few snapshots or stills of machining of this, uh, this part. I didn't video record the whole process. This is not a machining video. This is about bushing insertion, but uh, there are a couple snapshots and I'll put them here in this, uh, coming up here in the video and you can take a look at those. Now that I've explained the technique, let's go over to the press, the shot press. I'll have to set this up a little bit and I'll set up the camera. Probably won't do a lot of dialogue while I'm actually pressing because I need to concentrate on what I'm doing and uh, give you a flavor of me actually installing the brush. at the shot press, you can see the setup. This is a ram coming down from the cylinder. This is the original bushing that I, I machined that we talked about a few minutes ago. This is the new bushing that I'm going to be inserting into this part of the swing arm. This uh, two by two wooden block I just cut to act as a support in this gap here to prevent uh, unnecessary flexing. I had to allow a little bit of slop there because remember the end of that bushing, that center section actually protrudes beyond the uh, face of the 
round part of the bushing, the outer part of the bushing, so I had to allow for that. And then on the bottom here I have just this piece of MDF to protect the bottom of the swing arm and then a couple of plates to press against. This is the second of the two bushings, by the way. The first, this one, I did a few minutes ago. And uh, I thought I'd uh, test out my setup before I video record it just to make sure that everything worked the way I expected it did. And it, and it does. Allow me to reposition a little bit here and I'm go going to go ahead and press this bushing in. I think we've got everything about ready to go here. Everything's aligned vertically. Now I'm going to pump the uh, jack and you can see it's moving. And I think that's about as far as we want to go. Here's the finished swing arm with the new bushings installed. You can see there. That went uh, quite well actually, uh, as I had hoped. Here's the originals, of course. This is the one that I had uh, machined. Those are now scrap, they're not of any use uh, further. Again, you don't need to use a shot press to install bushings. You can use the threaded rod or bolt and washer nut method that I alluded to earlier. Uh, check out that previous video I shot on that if you're interested in pursuing that solution. I know some folks just uh, will put a bushing in there and wheel on it with a hammer on the end. Uh, I don't recommend that because I think the risk is too high for damage. Certainly the finish, especially if you've got a freshly painted part, uh, bending something, denting something, or damaging uh, the components in form, I, I just don't recommend it. There are viable alternatives besides wheeling on it with a hammer and trying to force it in. Bushings by design are uh, essentially an interference fit or a tight fit they're supposed to be because you don't want those bushings turning in there. So they're intended to be a tight fit. They're not supposed to be sloppy. So this, uh, this swing arm now is ready to install, which we'll be doing here in an upcoming episode. We'll be mounting the swing arm and uh, I don't have the, as of this video recording, I don't have the chrome back yet so I can't uh, finish reassembling the rear shock so if I do install the swing arm I'll mount up uh, at the back here with a couple of wooden struts just to support it uh, temporarily but we'll see as we get into it here a little bit further. Um, that's going to be it for this video today folks. Any issues, questions, thoughts drop me know. I'd be most interested in hearing your thoughts on um, bushing installation on swing arms if you've ever done it and your experiences with it, feel free to drop a note below. And as usual, thanks for watching.